forms. So if you remember that this is PCM sequence, which is PCM sequence and these are different PCM waveforms. That means for a particular sequence that I want to transmit, so, so that I can choose any of this waveform, but each waveform will, uh, but each one has its uh, merit and demerit that we will discuss today. And we'll also discuss the finite uh, the finite details of, of this of these PCM waveforms. Okay, so just let us let us brief that it has decapitated. How did you how did you go to, uh, get these sequences? If you remember that actually we have got uh, actually we got this was my analog signal, continuous time signal. I sampled it. The natural sampling was like this, one time value. And actually we considered that, okay, some eight different levels, that is CV TDC. So one time value from minus four to plus four and zero to seven were, were my code number. And say one, so actually it is 1.3. So depending on that, we, we have broken this whole dynamic range. And considering the dynamic range was minus 4 volt to plus 4 volt, please remember that and actually the my code levels were something 1.5 volt, 2.5 volt, 3.5 volt. Okay. And similarly, that my minus 0.5 volt. So these are different levels. If you can remember that this is this is this is the level. So my my all voltages will be mapped to these levels only. Okay, so minus 4 will say if something is minus 4, it will go here. Okay, minus, and if something is, uh, you know, uh, minus 3 point something, then it will go in this one. But if it is something uh, minus 2.9, then it will go up, and if something is minus 2, that means minus 2.1 or so, it will go down. So, so my, so my levels are, so as, as we remember that these are my levels. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different levels. And uh, so, so with that, we have we have uh, finally with this quantized value, we have got this code number, with which levels I will transmit, and then from there, as it is uh, some sort of a code number, and assuming that uh, eight different levels. So that means uh, 2 to the power uh, small l, this is l equal to 8, l equal to 2 to the power small l, so that means l equal to 3. So this is 3 bits, 3 bits kind of, that, that we are talking about. Then we have broken this boundary and just we are trans. so this is my PCM sequence and that PCM sequence we are just transmitting and then I am doing say one bit and then then we are transmitting. Okay. So so that we discussed that this is my in a non-return to zero. These are my non-return to zero. That means there is no at, at zero I will never get means I will not stabilize anything at, at zero voltage. Either it is plus volt or minus volt and it is a bipolar coding. This NRJ A NRJ M that is all in non non-return to zero. The point is non-return to Okay, so at and non-return to zero level, we we discussed these things. That means if I have uh, one, then it is plus five volt or plus some plus two point five volt, whatever it is, and zero means a uh, uh, minus five volt. If it is one, then two one, then plus five volt. Now it is non-return to zero. 
mark means I have uh, something like that that I have uh, a mark that means one is represented by a change in level and zero is not represented. Zero is represented by no change in level. Okay, say I have started uh, from. Please remember I have always started from this bottom one. So that means one means change in level. Then I am. I will be here. Zero means no change in level. Okay, and uh, and here please remember that I started one. That means uh, both one and zero. I will uh, here. I, what I am doing it is level. And here it is mark and space. Mark means one. Space means zero. Okay. So that means here. That please remember that here if I get one, always I will do a change. Zero means I will go down. Again, one means I will go up. Here one is yes, I will be in up. Zero means I will be in down. So all three zero I will be down. One means always I will be up like this. But here you please remember that. That here it is mark one. That means if one, then I will do the transition. But zero, I will not do any transition. See again zero to one. You see that I will do the transition. But this one, see this one and this this one. Here one means five volt, but here one means minus five volt. So it is not related to the level. Okay. But point is that what is the that energy dim is called the differential coding. Differential, differential coding means what? Differential coding means that uh, that that if even if that I have a some sort of a uh, means uh, means that if I if I have a somehow uh, polarity inversion, then also this is not a problem. That means if I uh, if, if you can remember, that means if you can energize them, if I just to do this thing, that means that I I do the polarity inversion. What will happen in this case? Polarity inversion. If I if I do, hmm? if by mistake somewhere I have got uh, zero at the down, I will get at one. I will have a change like this. So that means it will be opposite. Again, one means I will change the. So that means here one, I will do one change. Here one, another change. Okay, then all zero, I will not do the change. Again one, I will do the change. Here one, I will do the change. And here one, I will do the change. So, so, so in this energy dim one, it is differential coding. Differential coding means from one one when I have a logical one, I will do a uh, from from another another uh, one level to another level. So that means if I do the logical, if I do if I just I missed it, so my transition will be like this. So, so then also I can from here also if I know that it is energy dim, I can I can I can from this way form also I will get the exactly same one. That means because my message is in my actual information is at the transition. So whether it is up transition down transition, it doesn't matter. When there is a transition, I know that. Next bit duration is one, so that's why this energy m one energy m is called differential coding. Okay. So that 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 we discussed in the in the last class, and similarly energy days we have we have seen that means if uh, if there's a if there's a zero then I have a transition. If there's one there is no transition. So that means that zero I have a transition over here. Here there is a zero. I have a transition. Here there is a zero. I have a transition. Transition means and stay will be there. And then at zero here also there is some zero. There is a transition. Okay. So now another thing is that this energy, this whole energy scheme, this is better in terms of noise immunity than the unipolar energy. Why? Because see, see, that means it is going from plus five volt to minus five. So in order to change, and here the unipolar energy it is going plus five volt to zero volt. So that means in order to change the level from plus V to minus V, you need a ten volt noise kind of. Okay, ten volt spike. Then only it will go to the next means another another level. But here you need only five volt noise to go from five volt to five volt noise or five volt some spike 
to make it a, in a in a other other state so that's why that energetic schemes they are the much much you know much much uh, much noise uh, noise to rather rather much immune to noise than the unicolas okay now uh, another one that is uh, that this this uh, this biphase level that we in the last class we, we started discuss discuss discussion that biphase level is sometimes we, we say this thing manchester coding okay so it is but it is this manchester coding sometimes the popular name is manchester coding that uh, first of all this in this manchester coding what is what is the uh, okay, let me write it here Oh, so. Here again, one zero double one one triple zero double one zero. So in the Manchester body, that one is that I know that one means it will go from transition at the middle. First of all, transition will be at the middle, and I have the the like one means from plus five volt to minus five volt and zero means minus five volt to plus volt again plus volt. so this is one part that that i have i have directed two things that rather rather one important thing that means depending on that it first of all it is also uh non-return to zero kind of thing no zero state if you, if you see it is plus volt either plus five volt or minus five volt either uh, it will be here or it will be here and also, always transition is at the middle of the bit duration. That means it has some sort of a self blocking mechanism. That means whenever you will see that there is a transition, that means, oh, that means you will understand, okay, so that is my the midpoint of the bit duration. So that means you will understand, so you will have some idea that, that actually when, when, so even if you lose the blocking, even if you lose the synchronization, second day at the next bit level, you will understand, okay, so this is, this is my, so at this point is the, uh, is the uh, bit, bit of the bit duration and I know my, this is my bit duration. Oh, that means, okay, this is, this is my the bit duration. So that means that it has a same clocking mechanism. Okay. Uh, other, because you will never, you will never take a signal, something like that. You will, because that means if you say clocking mechanism means you have, you have forgotten your starting point or you have missed your starting point. Okay. See, we missed your starting point means that is that what is the clocking mechanism? Suddenly that you have lost that at the detector side, say you are, you are confused that whether I will take this portion or whether I will take this portion. Because these boundaries are not available. These boundaries are the transmitter for your understanding. Okay. So I know that. So whether I will take the uh, blue one or whether I will take the red one because I know the bit duration. Okay, so that if it is a self crossing mechanism, I know that this red red window will never be because there is a transition over here. That means transition means at the middle. So always it, it must be the blue blue window that I sh I should consider. Okay, so that's why that Manchester coding is. Uh, one of the one of the popular uh, this uh, means the PCM sequence to waveform conversion mechanism. Okay, that uh, after this uh, and also please please note that it is transition at the middle. Okay, that next is that means that biphase A and biphase E. By phase M and by phase S, you see that always that I have a transition at the beginning of the interval. And please try to understand these three that by phase, forget about tail M and S, that means there's transition, if any, always at the middle. If there's a tra transition, if any, there's, it will be in the middle. That means and there may be a transition at the end also, but that if, if transition is there, it will be at the at the middle. So that will give you some sort of a clocking mechanism. And this biphase A and by that S, that is transition at the beginning of the interval. So that means you see, that is always you will find that 
at the beginning of the interval. You see that each each beginning will find a transition. So this will also give you some sort of a self clocking difference. That means when there's a transition, first of all you you will know that there are, um, so trans so always I know that if there's a transition, then there's a chance that this will be a beginning. But yes, here also one so that means if there's a transition, either it will be beginning or it will be the midpoint. Say this, say you are here. That is either transition at the middle or transition at the beginning. Okay. Say by phase M means what? <coughs> you see, that means one like this and zero means no transition. Again one, then one, zero and please try to understand that. See, it is one means I have a transition like this. Okay, by phase M. But I know that at, um, always at the beginning there is a transition, so I will go down. But zero means no transition. Well, but again at the beginning of the transition, then it is one means I will again move like this. Okay? And please try to understand that I here I started from this point. Okay? So at the beginning I have a transition, then one I will do like this. So that means here one is going up, but here one is going down. Okay. Then this one is also going down. Okay. Now then zero means again transition. Then I will not do anything. Again zero means I will go. I will I will do the transition. Then I will not do anything. Again zero means I will go the transition because at the, at the beginning I have a transition always, whether it is one or zero and I will do this thing. Then again one you see that initially I have to at the beginning I have to do the transition. Okay, I have done the transition. Okay. And one means at the middle there will be a transition. Okay. Similarly, by phase S, that first of all that it will be at each one I will have a transition. You see, at each beginning I will have a transition. Okay. Now, say I have started from here, so I have a transition. Okay. Now, now S means if there is a zero, then I will have a transition. If one, then I will not have a transition. If there is a zero, I will have a mid, mid, mid point transition, mid duration transition, but at one, I will not do any transition. Okay. Now, then another is delay modulation. That means, so this is about by phase. And delay modulation, sometimes we say the Miller. Okay, so delay modulation, what it does? That means a uh, one is represented by a transition at the midpoint of the beat interval, and zero is represented by no transition unless it is followed by another key. First of all, that is one means a midpoint transition. First of all, one means a midpoint transition. Yeah, fine. Zero fast one zero no transition. One means again midpoint transition. Okay. One means again midpoint transition. Zero means no transition. But if there is another zero, that means two consecutive zero, then it is transition. Then again zero means two consecutive zero is there, so again it is a transition. Then one means midpoint transition, like this again, one, one means again midpoint transition, then zero means no transition, okay, and again one means midpoint transition. Okay, so this is, this is about, about the uh, Delay modulation sometimes we say it is a so this is about Miller and another is some sort of a dicode energy and dicode RJ. First of all, in this dicode energy and RJ, I will have something like this. This is my zero level. Okay. Zero level. 
Now in that one, that what I will do that in the dipole energy, that one to zero and zero to one data transmission changes the pulse polarity. Without a data transmission, the zero zero level is thin. That means if there is a one to zero, let me let me write it again. One. So type one zero. So first of all, what I am doing that means if there is a one to zero transition, then uh, what I will do, I will have a polarity change of the voltage. If and if it is uh, polarity change means minus five volt to plus five volt, and if it is means one to zero and zero to one, and without a data transition, the zero level will be same. That means. That means one to zero. Say I am here. Say one to zero. I will have a polarity change. Okay. Then I will stay there. Zero to one. Again, I will have a polarity change. Plus five volt to minus, and I will stay there. One to one. I will not do the polarity change. But I told when there is no uh, bit transition, I will send the zero volt. So I am sending zero volt. One to zero. Again, there is a. And also, please remember one to zero. That means it is a transition, and if it's a uh, one to zero and zero to one pro produces the uh, means uh, changes the pulse polarity. And but it is it is like that that I I also that means pulse polarity means you can say that means from here whether what I will do means it is it is one to zero means I have to change the pulse polarity. But I am at zero voltage whether I should go here or here. So that generally people say, okay, fine. So if it is one to zero, I will, I will go up. Something, something like that. You have to take some assumption. Otherwise, you can, you can go down. If, if I go down like this, one to zero, I will be there. Zero to zero, no, uh, no bit, bit change, no bit change. Then zero to one. That means I will have a this one. Then I will move like this, one to one. Then no change. One to zero. Again, there's a change. Say I am, I am moving here because here it is zero to one. I I have made up, made it up. So one to zero, I am going down. Then be there and zero to one again going up. Something like that. But it doesn't matter. That is which one, which one you are you are following. Okay. So any convention you can you can take it up and finally at the reconstructor side, the reconstruction the receiver side, you can take out this. Data. Okay. Now the question is that means that there I, I told you that there are different waveforms, but each waveform has its advantage and disadvantage. If you read these things, I basically explained this one. One is that that DC component. That means that, that what are the what are the criteria that you should check that when you are when you are choosing one particular signal when you are where rather choosing one particular signal rather DCM waveform over others. Okay. What are the matrix? So the matrix that we should use one is the DC component. That means that we should not use that type of you know uh, signaling scheme or PCM waveform where it has a, a large DC component or large low frequency component because then what will happen that then I cannot do the AC coupling. Okay, AC coupling means say if I have a, some sort of an inductive effect type of thing in between say I am transmitting something. Uh, wireless power transfer, this, that. So, some sort of a transmit, trans, if some, something transformer is inside, okay, in some transformer action, not that actual transformer, say that transformer principle is there. Then, what will happen? The transformer generally have a very uh, little sensitivity to the low frequency, just like the DC, you cannot go up, you cannot make up and down to transform. Okay, so that's why then, then the low frequency information should be, will be lost. So that's why I have to choose some signaling waveform for which the DC component or low frequency component should be as minimal as possible. There's a self. So another thing is that that self blocking. That means if I lose the synchronization, so I should again get back. So that means at the receiver side, that means I should say somehow I have lost the boundary. Okay. So the state blocking means again from, from another one say that we say Manchester coding. I know that if there's a transition, it will be either at the start or at the middle. Okay. 
So, and I know that if it is one, then it, then it is from uh, uh, then top to uh, rather plus five to minus five. If it is zero, minus five to plus five, something like that. I have an idea. So, by seeing that we know that means by seeing the waveform, I can I can say oh. This is that means at from this point I, I should I should choose the right window. That means I should not choose the red window. I should choose the blue window. Now from from there I try to understand. Oh, this is this is some sort of a zero cycle. So that's why this is called a self clocking. That self clocking should be that means it has an inherent synchronizing or clocking feature. Another is the error detection. That means that means by that means some, there are some schemes. That means if you have some sort of a Error in the in the channel, then you have from the from the uh, signaling scheme itself, you can find out that oh, if, if this is the case, then the the the, the, the signal waveform cannot be like this. That means signal uh, waveform should be like this. So that means there is some error, error detection uh, mechanism or error, error detection property. Okay, just there are some that duo binary. Duo binary still I have not discussed. I will explain it what what a duo, duo binary is. But it is mostly a correlative coding kind. Of. Kind of kind of uh, signaling, and that is the bandwidth compression. That means I will use multi-level codes that will increase the efficiency of bandwidth allocation. That means more, you understand bandwidth compression means if you if you use more bandwidth, then you have to pay more. Okay, so for transmitting the data, you also should be should be your scheme should be budget friendly. Okay, so and that is that means more information transmitted per unit bandwidth. Okay, so that's why it's called bandwidth compression. We will explain it. And another is the differential coding. Differential coding means this is, that is that means uh, the polarity of the without affecting the data detection. That means even if what is what is the differential coding? That means say Manchester. Say even if your say polarity got uh, disturbed. That means even if you have something like this. Okay, say. Even if, you're, if it is it is uh, moved like like this thing, then also you can you can detect the uh, PCM sequence at the receiver side. Okay, so this is this is called the uh, differential encoding, and another is the noise immunity that I told that NRDX schemes are better noise prone, better better noise uh, noise robust than the unipolar scheme because here in order to make the change in level from plus 5 to minus 5 you need a 10 volts spike but here in unipolar update you need only a 5 volts spike anyway so these are my uh, so that means you should choose so that means you should be very careful about about these metrics okay or by by checking these things you should you should decide that okay so which scheme i should i should use and another one that means let us let us see that means say say let us let us see the the paper. sir yes, sir Achha. sir why should it have uh, differential encoding Pardon? why should the signal have uh, differential encoding no no say differential encoding means say if you just an experiment. Just wait. Say I have an energy data. Okay, very simple scheme. One zero. One means high. Zero means low. Fine. Then, if there is some spike, and say somehow the waveform has become inverted. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Then. At the receiver, what it will you will detect? 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. Which is 100 percent error. Okay. With an RJL, do you agree? Now, now check the same thing with uh, say differential coding. Okay. Say that means say I do some sort of a uh, 
do a binary, you have not studied, forget about do a binary. At this point, you are not talking about this global. Now, NRJ, do you see that means NRJ means all this NRJ del, NRJ dim, NRJ des, all these things. First of all, if you see that means this. That one important thing in this in this graph, first of all, this is a, some sort of a, that that any waveform type or any 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 PCM waveform that requires more than one hertz for sending one symbol per second is relatively bandwidth inefficient. Please try to understand. Any PCM waveform type that requires more than one hertz for sending one symbol per second. Okay. Do you understand this line? Is bandwidth inefficient. That means say Manchester signal. Manchester signaling means biphase. This one, biphase A most probably. Manchester is Manchester is biphase A. Okay. You see, that means for what is the So that means if the point is that means this side, if your signaling waveform has a huge PSD on this side of, of the spectrum, means a normalized bandwidth, then this is inefficient. This side to understand. Let's say Manchester. First of all, it has a it has a huge spectrum on so that's why this is this is some sort of a not bandwidth efficient. Okay. So that means what I want, some sort of in one hertz, one hertz means say in one second, one hertz. Something like that, this is one hertz. Okay. As I forget. So this is some sort of a zero and this is one second. And in one second, I want to transmit some sort of a one bit or say one symbol. Okay. okay. So that is that is my requirement. So if it is, if then my power spectral density is more than that, that means this is my normalized bandwidth is more than one, then this side is inefficient. Okay, the other I am putting a great kind of. inefficient. So we should always we should we should be somewhere this side. Now another thing is that that I told that a low frequency component should not be present. You see that in NRJ, so it is normalized bandwidth means and this side is some sort of a low frequency. Now for this one, sorry. so first of all, some sort of a This side is low frequency. Now you see that NRJ and do binary. Forget about at this point do binary. I'm not at this point. I'm not talking about say that NRJ has a huge low frequency component. Okay, so that means it is it is it has an inductive coupling. Why it is it is not very good? Okay. Now the delay modulation or dipole energy, they are somehow better because uh, they don't they don't have their spectrum doesn't extend more than one 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 this uh, means uh, that uh, normalized bandwidth means the RG two second. So it's it's okay. Okay. Now now that that the next one. So that means that depending on on the requirement, I will choose my my basic point is that see this is one of the main thing that means power spectral density I will check different one okay not what this that in an efficient side I will not go also I will not go to that too too much low frequency side I have to choose somewhere here so in that so in whether it, see there is no self clocking self clocking feature in this way in this in this uh, bar. Here it is only a power spectral frequency point of view. So you have, you have from the same set whether okay, I am choosing delay modulation and dipole energy. Say we are there. Is there any I mean, so whether which one is good from the self blocking point of view? If I lose synchronization, if my channel is very weak, or say frequently I may lose synchronization. 
So those things you have to choose and you find that, okay, dicodin and jet is good at least to table for me. I will, for, for this one, I will use dicodin. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So now let us, let us move a little bit back in the uh, books. Things progress wise, then I think that will be. Now, if you could. So, if you remember that we have we have studied this one in a in a Detail that means I have uh, eight different levels of ADC of, of the quantization levels, and that uh, L is basically if you can remember this is equal to 2 to the power small L. Okay, and that means and and we explain that means say if something is something in that do dot. It will go to the q by 2 point and if something here it will go to the minus q by 2 point okay so that means the maximum quantization error if if the if it is some sort of a, if each each level is deferred by q voltage is deferred by q voltage maximum quantization error will be q by 2 Okay, because just as 0 0.001, it will go to say 0 0.5. And say minus 0 0.001, it will go to minus 0 0.5. That means if, if Q is 1, then you have a 0.5 volt, 0.55 volt. That, that we discussed most if you, if, you if you could remember. Okay. And please remember this Q. This Q is constant, means here also it is Q volt, here also it is Q volt. That means when the voltage level is high, near VP, then also plus Q volt. When voltage, voltage level is very small, then also it is Q volt. Okay, so that means the quantization level is uniform. Please try to understand. Quantization level is uniform over that dynamic range of the C. So that we have studied fine. Now, now let us let us uh, discuss this. So this one, this one, I don't have any any problem. We have studied this. Okay. Uh, and we have, we, have, we have seen that signal to noise ratio is CL square. All this, all these things we have studied. And we have we have assumed that A equal to A each. So A, I would like to do eight, eight different levels of PCM sequence that some. I want to encode the code, so I will have so three bits kind of thing. Then, then this is my PCM sequence. Then I can break this PCM sequence. I can use some sort of a say an RJ where one will be represented by something, zero will be represented by something. In that way, I can make the waveform. I can use some sort of a Miller coding, or I can use Manchester coding. So that this Miller coding, Manchester coding, they are basically your PCM sequence to PCM waveform conversion. Okay, this we have studied. Now let us see. see the see an interesting one. Okay. So so as far as uniform say uniform because we 
till now we are talking about uniform quantization. Now you see this interesting graph. This is a speech signal characteristics. This side, say x-axis, is something the signal magnitude okay, related to the RMS of substance. That means signal magnitude divided by RMS of that magnitude. Means x, say xn divided by xr, f xrx, something like that. Okay. Say my speech signal is, if you see, my speech signal is something like that. Okay. Generally, speech signal is like this. And you see that that at this almost one. This is 0 0.15. This that means that at this side your signal magnitude is instantaneous magnitude is lower than the RMS. And this side signal magnitude in this I'm talking about the X axis, forget about graph. And this side it is signal magnitude is greater than RMS. Fine. Now this side is the probability. Probability means that means that you see that uh, probability that that your axis of value is exceeded means what? That means most of the time that is here it is 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 with 0.5 probability that means your signal value will be some sort of a point two or something. Okay. Now that means you see that means fifteen percent, fifteen percent of the time that is point one five probability. What will happen? Point one five probability. Your signal will be higher than the RMS. Okay. Now, with 0.85 to one, that is 85 percent of the time. That means, that means this portion, 0.85 percent of the time, your signal is lower than RMS. It's instantaneous signal. At that, we are seeing that most of the time, signal is very small and with some sharp peak character. This is a this is a typical speech characteristic. Now, the question is that is if I want to transmit this speech signal for a telephony application. Just a telephony application. This is that, that is that was the classical communication application, telephony application. Now that means we have to do the ADC and we have to do this uh, sampling, then quantization, then encoding, then baseband waveform. This is the basic point. Now say I am so now I am taking a case. First of all, see this is very important. This is the see this line. This is a uniform quantization. This is a non-uniform quantization. I'm coming to non-uniform quantization. Uniform quantization means I have a some sort of a say 16 levels. I have broken it. So 0 to 16 each. So that means this is one level, this is one level, and each one is some sort of a q. Q1. Here also Q volt, here also Q volt. Okay, some, somewhere means near that. Because this is some sort of a, in your sinusoid, this is some sort of a zero volt time. Okay. So here also zero volt, here also zero volt. Everything. This is a uniform one. So this is a strong signal. This, right, this is a strong signal means I have a full dynamic range signal is there. Okay. Say I have it is something minus 5 volt to plus 5 volt. This is that. But speech signal, we have seen that most of the time it is weak. 
and very few means it's pure time that means 15 percent of the time it will be higher than the rms now say i am saying that this is this is so that means most of the time i will be in a weak weak portion weak signal so that means say this is my say some sort of a weak signal whether i am taking a weak sinusoid and strong sinusoid then Now, what will happen in the non-uniform quantization, what I have done in this, when the signal value is low, I have done a finer quantization. And when signal value is high, I have the same, same distance I have covered. This I to understand. Same voltage from this range. Same dynamic range I have covered. Okay. But what I have done, at the low values, that is near zero, I have a finer quantization levels. For higher values, higher signal values, I have a coarser quantization. Now, what is the advantage in it? So, now, that means, the non-uniform quantization means, so at the lower input, I have a finer values. At the higher one, I have a bigger quantization. This is bigger, this is small. But uniform quantization means like this. For, for all dynamic range, my quantization value is this much. Okay. Now, what will happen? Actually, speech signal is like a weak signal. Most of the time, it is weak signal. Now, when it is a fine kind of thing, means fine uh, levels, your quantization is, quantization error is also very small because here, say this is a Q by Q, but here it is as yes, Q by Q is B. So, Q is also, means Q by Q is also B. Now, try to understand. The, say strong signal. Strong signal, I am doing a quantization. Here, this side it is uniformly I am quantizing. And this side it is I am doing a non-uniform quantization. Okay. Now what I am doing, I am just spinning this portion, then actually it will be visible. Okay. Now let us see the weak signal. Weak signal I am doing the quantization with a uniform one. What will happen? It is like this. I have only two different levels, whole signal. Okay. The same symmetric part, this side. You see, with the non-uniform quantization, I have a one, two, three, three, then four, most probably five, five, all five different levels. Because yes, because I my range is somewhere here to in the this is the range. Okay. Now, in this one, in this range, I have only how many levels? In the uniform case, I have only maybe one, two levels. So that's why it is I am getting two levels. But here, I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five levels. Or five or four levels. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Uh, five levels. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that here as Q is small, then Q by Q is small. So that means in these your my quantization error is much less. So that means, and I, I know the signal to quantization noise, signal to quantization noise ratio we are talking about. Now as signal is here low, quantization noise is also low. So my SNR is good. But so that means most of the time my SNR is good for low for, for low amplitude. And for high amplitude signal, what happened that in this one, my quantization error is big, but my signal is also big. So that means you will always see in a non-uniform quantization, your SNR, this is good, irrespective of the, because when it is low amplitude, because I, my quantization error is also small, my signal is small, so signal to quantization error is high. But here, for the weak signal, your quantization error is always big. Okay, this much is your quantization error. 
So, but the strong signal, so your quantization error is also same. So, but signal to error, signal to noise ratio at the weak signal case, it is very bad. But here, as most of the time your noise is, uh, signal is weak, so your SNR will be always better if, if you have, if you have, please, if you have most of the time the low amplitude signal. So that's why that as speech signal has having that type of characteristic that 85% time I have always, it is like a uh, small amplitude signal. So I will go for a non-uniform quantization. So how will you implement the non-uniform quantization? That I will explain in the next class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.